scorched earth. It's very stressful, it's a very emotional time. Fertile farmland fallowed. As a grower, it's just depressing to look at. To see this much ground being fallow is, is, is not something I like to see. Our food supply in peril. The sad thing is, is it doesn't matter how efficient you get, if you don't have water, you just can't farm. Towns drying up, jobs disappearing. Roughly about 40% unemployment is higher than normal. These are desperate times that call for desperate measures. Just the very thought that you might be drinking your own wastewater is never comforting. Time is running out. It's catastrophic, I think, thinking that a town of 100,000 people could potentially run out of water. This is cracked, running out of water, a special investigation. Water, precious and priceless, something none of us can live without. But a prolonged and debilitating drought is threatening towns, farms, even water supplies across the country. Hello, I'm meteorologist Jim Cantori, and welcome to Cracked, running out of water. Empty lakes and riverbeds, fruit orchards left to wither and die, farms once full of life, now dry and barren. It's a crisis with ripple effects across the entire nation. In Wichita Falls, Texas, a crippling four-year drought has taken the community to a place they've never been before. A city of 105,000 people now taking extreme measures to ensure the taps don't run dry. Water that should be coming from here could now come from here. The concept that you'd be drinking the water that yesterday you sent on its merry way, I mean, I don't think anybody really wants that. Wichita Falls, Texas, a city in crisis. The water situation is extremely serious. We've never suffered in this area the way we are suffering now uh, in previous droughts. And so it's been very important for us to conserve water. A crippling four-year drought has put Wichita Falls in danger of becoming the largest American city to run out of water. It's catastrophic, I think, thinking that a town of 100,000 people could potentially run out of water. It is the driest three-year period in recorded history, and lake levels are dangerously low. Only about a quarter of their supply remains. All we have is rain all around us, but it, it just breaks up right when it gets over Wichita Falls. It's like we're, we're in a halo. We have a dome over us or a bubble. It's a curse. It's, I don't know whose curse it is, but they need to take it back because we're done with it. To extend their water supply, the city built a state-of-the-art facility to treat wastewater. After four stages of high-tech filtration, it's then mixed back in with the water from the lake. That water will be safe to drink. Uh, I'll be the first to take a drink out of the tap when we turn that on. It's cleaner than the water that's coming out of our secondary treatment facility. There are people out there that will say, hey, I'm, I'm drinking my toilet water is, is kind of a quote that you get. But technically, when you uh, have a surface water source, you're drinking probably somebody else's uh, discharge, their potty water that's uh, been treated. There's some despair. Nobody really knows how to fix it. I mean, the only person that can fix it is Mother Nature, God, get some rain falling in this place. The plan to use treated water will buy Wichita Falls an extra two years of drinking water and save residents the cost of trucking water in. That would cost the city nearly half a million dollars a month. This depleted water supply has forced people to change their way of life. But this Texas city has grit and a new character forged through adversity. Drought stricken and faced with a harsh reality, Wichita Falls, Texas is at risk of becoming the largest American city to run out of water. The first thing that comes out is disbelief. I think we're entering a new drought of a record. The longer it goes, I think the more frightened people get. They fear that water is gonna run out. And when we realized that, that this could get very, very serious very quickly, uh, we started taking steps to conserve. A massive citywide effort to save water and their community. Time for the Bears' rain song. Let's do a classic from the Beatles. Rain, 104.7 The Bear. The idea of the song is to remind the listeners about rain. We had a group of churchgoers uh, from a local church and gathered at the lake bed. They sang songs, uh, read some prayers, and, and hoped and prayed that the rains will come. Teresa Rose has championed the water conservation effort. 
She uses biodegradable plates for family dinners and collects shower water to use in her garden. We have cut our water usage by 75% in our household alone. We basically broke the roof down by different uh, areas and calculated the square footage. We'll attach the rain barrels at a certain volume to the different uh, downspouts and then we'll be able to hook a hose and in most areas we'll be able to gravity feed it to our trees and to our lawn and to our landscaping. Teresa can now collect and store 5,000 gallons. The citizens of this community step up to the plate when they need to. In 2010, pre-drought, we used about 10 billion gallons of water a year. This year, we're set to use less than 5 billion gallons. I almost see water to be more defined as, as oil, as gold. It, it's that important, it's that critical. Water is, is a precious commodity. Uh, before, it was taken for granted. I'm hoping we get the rain, and the rain is what's going to solve everything. Keep thinking positive rain thoughts, and keep praying for rain. To many Americans, drought is a color on a map. But to the people living in these dark red shades, it's a hardship that has met with serious consequences. Meteorologist Chris Warren joins me now to talk about the crisis in Wichita Falls, Texas, which, Chris, has to be a catastrophe. It's certainly heading that way, Jim. You think about it, going into the summer months, we're still mm. on the front end. And Lake Arrowhead, it supplies the water, the city, with water. It is only 25% wow. full. That's it going into the hot summer months. So the city is going to spend the summer under stage five water restrictions. And that means there's going to be no water for yards, none for golf courses or for car washes and local home improvement stores. They're not selling plants because people can't water. Right. So there's no point for that. And then here's another thing. It's going to be against the law for restaurants to just bring you water. You have to ask for it. It's usually the first thing on your table. Right, you usually just show up and it's there. And now it's unlawful. Right, you wow. have to ask for it. The economy in Wichita Falls is driven by farms and ranches that surround it, and they are feeling it too. I'm Michael White, a farmer and rancher from Vernon, Texas. We're supposed to have been in a drought since about 2011. It's as bad as bad as I, could, I think it could be in the past four years. It's very stressful and it's a very emotional time. Uh, because you put all this hard work and time into a crop and, and a lot of money and, and just to see it just wither away, it, it, it can really get to you. We've probably lost anywhere from 30 to 50 percent of our income on, on different crops. I hope that America understands the value of America's farmers and, and the agricultural producers of America. I really do hope that, 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 that they understand what the farmers go through and I hope they understand that we do need a, a sufficient and reliable food source in America. And without water, it's gonna be hard to do. And so that's why I think it's so important that we continue to have water conservation methods, not only in Texas in the drought areas, but all throughout the United States. And Jim, many Texas farmers, they also have cattle. So they're able to sell off some of their cattle this year because the prices for cattle are so high that they are able now to make ends meet, but only because they do the farming and have the cattle. Little silver lining that everybody's yep. praying for El Nino, that's for sure. California, another hard hit state and home to some of the most fertile land on the planet. But this season, hundreds of thousands of acres will go unplanted. Which is the area's tomato field that's in production because it has water, which translates into product, jobs, uh, benefit the communities and without it what you see over here is a fallow field with none of that. Up next the difficult decisions farmers are making to stay in business. It's, it's really depressing for us to leave ground out I mean we're, we're still paying taxes and, and, and payments and everything on ground that's, that's non-productive. 